Hey there friends, Jeff Ritz here, and I wanted to walk through a little bit about dependency injection concepts in ASP.NET Core. Inside this new web application framework that we have, we can configure dependency injection, the capability for objects to be automatically injected into other classes, very easily using the startup CS file that we have here, and it, it does all this configuration inside the configure services method here on line 45. Now it configures initially some entity framework information here on 51 to make that available, some information about identity services here on line 54, MVC, and then some information so it can send emails and SMSs down here on 61 and 62. Not bad, but it doesn't make my configuration options available that are exposed as a property here on 42, it doesn't make that available to the rest of my application. So I can add that configuration into my dependency injection container by just saying services add singleton configuration. Now, whenever I request an I configuration route, my entire configuration for my application will be available inside those other objects. Check this out. Let's look at an example. I'm going to go to home controller and add a new constructor here. Let's accept an I configuration root, and we'll call that config, and we will expose something called configuration. Let's make that, no, I want to make that a property. Generate property. There we go, so now I have a property called configuration. Now, inside my about, I'll output some information from configuration. So, let's make some configuration available to share. Inside of app settings, the contents of this file are loaded into my configuration. So, I'll add a new configuration option down here at the bottom that says, hello, di sample. So, I've got a property named hello, and the value is di sample. Inside home controller, then, I'll put at the end of this text configuration hello. Now it should grab that text that I put into hello and concatenate it here on the end of line 26 for me. Let's take a look and see what that what that looks like on my web page. I'll bring up that browser. This is the default page the way it, ap it initially appears when I build my project. I'll refresh. And now you see it put the DI sample text right there next to the message. Simple. Now, there's other things we can do, some other tricks we can pull with dependency injection. Let me go back to Visual Studio. And I can actually inject that configuration information directly into my view. This is really neat. If I go back over to my About Razor page, I can actually now, let me start off by referencing the configuration information. So that is using Microsoft um, Extensions Configuration. And then I can inject that configuration information by just saying inject I configuration, oops, configuration root, there we go. I'll call that config here as well. This is from my config. And now I can say at config, hello. Let me rerun this action and see what happens. Back here in my browser, I'll refresh. This is from my config, and now it outputs here, di sample as well. So I've injected into both my razor view and my constructor of the controller the configuration information. I can inject all different places throughout the MVC pipeline. That's pretty cool, but maybe I'd like to use a different container, something different from the default ASP.NET container. You can do that as well. Let me show you how you can configure AutoFAC to work with this. So to add AutoFAC, I need to add those packages into my project. So I'll go over to Project JSON, 
And here at the end of the list of dependencies, I'll add an entry for autofac. And I also need to add an entry for autofac extensions dependency injection. Now these are the latest version, this 400RC1177, as of the time of this recording. There may be a newer version at the time that you're watching this. So I'll save that, and immediately when I save, you see it's restoring packages over here on the right. right? This is ASP.NET and the NuGet package manager taking care of wiring things up for us immediately. With that now all restored, I'm going to go back into my startup method, and inside my configure services, I'm going to hide all this other configuration mumbo jumbo, and I'm going to start to configure autofac. Now, ASP.NET needs to be told there's a different container coming here. So instead of returning void, I need to return an I service provider. Now, to, to build my autofac configuration, I need a builder. And this is the um, autofac, and I need to say container builder. So I have this new autofac container builder available to me. And then I need to populate it with the information that was just collected above in that region for dependency injection. So I will populate it with services. Now I've got the red squiggly here because populate's actually in the dependency injection namespace. So yes, please add that using statement for me, Visual Studio. And then I need to grab my new container that we just built. So I will say builder, build. And now I have my container, but I need to return an I service provider. So let's return that by saying container.resolve I service provider. Now, resolve is on a different namespace as well. That's on the autofact namespace. So yes, please Visual Studio add that using statement, and I want to return that. And it gets rid of the final red squiggly I had up here under configure services. So that looks like everything. Let me save that. I'm going to go over to my razor file here. And just to make sure that we get new information here, this is new. I'll add that extra information. And I'll go back over to my browser and refresh. And after a second or two, because Visual Studio pre-compiled everything in the background, I should get all the same page content coming back along with my new statement at the bottom, this is new. There we go, this is new. So I've changed out my dependency injection container. I've got it doing the exact same things, but I can take advantage of some of those features of autofact now that aren't present in the default container. So to recap, we've placed items into the dependency injection container, we've injected them into our views and our controllers, and we've shown how we can add items into configuration and reference them very easily. And I've shown you how you can use autofact to inject your own containers into the ASP.NET Core pipeline. Thanks for watching. Check out my blog for more at jeffreyfritz.com.